What are technicals and why have they become so common? A high school student from Adairsville High School in the U.S. state of Georgia sent me some questions for his Intro to Engineering course. So instead of writing them all out in an email, I'm going to answer them right here so that all of us can benefit. Here are the questions. What are technicals? Why have they become so common? What are the pros and cons? Can they be improved? And do they have a place in future warfare? Now, as you can see, I am finally moved into the new studio. So if you want your country's flag up on the wall, send me a unit patch from your country. I'll put your flag up. Uh, Canada and Bulgaria sent me flags, but no patch. Uh, I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. Uh, and Sweden, uh, the Gryffindor over here is reserved just for you. My address for patches is in the description below. And by the way, uh, if you do send me a package, uh, do not send me any Cuban cigars. Uh, Cuban cigars are illegal, and I will be obligated to destroy them by burning. So let's get started. Start off, uh, what are technicals? In military terminology, technicals refer to improvised fighting vehicles typically assembled from civilian grade vehicles or light trucks. Usually they're modified with heavy weapons such as machine guns, recoilless rifles, rock propelled grenades, or anti-aircraft guns. These vehicles are commonly used by insurgent groups, militias, any place in conflict zones where conventional military equipment is scarce or just difficult to acquire. Now, one quick note here. The term technical actually comes from the 1990s and Somalia during that whole Black Hawk Down era. Aid organizations couldn't put the term bribe to warlord on their expense reports, so they called them technical payments or technical assistance grants, and the warlords would escort the aid to wherever the aid needed to go. A little trivia for you. So why have technicals become so common? Well, first, it's accessibility. A truck like the Toyota Helix is sold pretty much everywhere but the U.S. and Japan. You can buy one from the dealer, drive it off the lot, and just install whatever you want on it. So technicals are really adaptable. So what are the pros and cons? So other than cost and adaptability, the main pro is mobility. If you can get to the battle first with the most troops, you hold a significant advantage because now you're dictating the terms of the battle to the enemy. And technicals are really dragoons. Now, dragoons were kind of like Napoleonic era technicals. These soldiers rode on horseback, but they fought on foot. They could get where they're going really fast and then fight with firearms. And the main reason for that was with the advent of gunpowder and muzzle-loading firearms, you couldn't really reload that big old musket on, on a moving horse. But cavalry warfighting with a saber was a skill that took like a lot of training. So if the soldier already knew how to ride a horse, well, now you have an infantryman who can do something like quickly shore up a flank or raid an enemy's unprotected supply lines in the rear and ride around and just cause chaos. So these guys weren't quite cavalry and they weren't quite infantry. Now, technicals often have a driver, a commander, one guy in the back with a heavy weapon, and six or so dismounts in the back. That is a lot of firepower, especially if you're fighting people who don't have similar equipment. You can get the men to the fight, and once they're there, the men can maneuver on foot while being supported by the technical's machine gun. The Taliban perfected this mode of warfare. They essentially took over Afghanistan for the first time in 1996 with a lot of help from technicals. The second pro is psychological impact. There is a reason why heavy weapons are heavy weapons. They are heavy. So if you're dismounted and moving on foot, but the adversary is mounted and carrying a heavy weapon like a Dishka machine gun, they gain a significant advantage over you. They can pin you down with that machine gun while the dismounts flank you, and there isn't a lot you can do about it other than run away. And that's a problem. So there's a huge psychological factor when facing a heavy weapon, especially if you don't have a similar weapon you can fight back with. The third pro is ease of maintenance. These are civilian vehicles. You can get parts for them at the auto parts store. You might be able to fix some of them yourselves with equipment that you just find lying around. So you don't need this long logistical channel to maintain your vehicles. During the Libya-Chad war, which incidentally is often called the Toyota war, 
the U.S., France, Sudan, and Egypt all offered support to Chad. And I believe the U.S. and France also offered tanks to Chad, and Chad was like, nah, we're good. We just want to use technicals. We just want to use trucks and missile launchers because our guys know how to maintain those. So, the disadvantages. To start, technicals have very limited protection. These vehicles are not protected against artillery, landmines, small arms fire, so they're not very survivable. They also have no sea burn or uh, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear protection systems. They also have a lack of command and control. Many modern military vehicles are built with an electrical system that is designed to handle battle management computers like the Army's JVCP. The average civilian pickup truck just doesn't have the electrical system uh, to install battle management computers and powerful radios so you can track where all of your guys are and communicate with them. So if you're facing an adversary with these battle management systems, they're always going to have better situational awareness than you. Can they be improved? Probably the biggest bang for the buck would be to upgrade the situational awareness system with something like ATAC running on a computer or a tablet along with a digital radio that could probably increase the effectiveness of uh, their communication and situational awareness. That would, that would probably increase the effectiveness of the unit more than armor or seaburn protection. Uh, if you try to upgrade the armor, you're going to have to upgrade the engine, and that's going to be really expensive because you're, you're pulling more weight with all that armor. Uh, and if you added a seaburn system, well, what about the dismounts in the back, right? They don't, they don't have any chemical protection in the back. But command and control systems could help solve the problem of situational awareness fairly easily. Finally, do they have a place in future warfare? Well, the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, once said, As you know, uh, you go to war with the army you have, uh, not the army you might want or wish to have at a later time. I mean, it is kind of a cold-hearted answer, but he wasn't wrong. How did the Civil War in Yugoslavia kick off so fast? It was a nation of hunters. They had a lot of hunting rifles, and that's what they went to war with first. Why did the Hutus slaughter the Tutsis with cheap Chinese machetes? Because they were available. So I don't see technicals ever going away because there will always be pickup trucks. But I could see technicals not being used just by insurgencies, but also by nation states. The first few hours of the Nagorno-Karabakh War and later the Ukrainian War proved that drones are game changers. A $3 million tank can be destroyed by a $500 drone. So maybe technicals or something like the infantry squad vehicle might be a future choice in conflict. The uh, infantry squad vehicle costs about 180 k The cost of a new M2A4 Bradley is about $4.25 million. Yeah, the Bradley's more capable, but both the ISV and the Bradley can be destroyed by a $500 drone. So maybe nation states might take a look at cheaper technical-like vehicles in the future just because of cost. Hey, John, thank you for asking this question, and I hope you get an A in your class. Now, if any of you want to support the channel, it would behoove you to head over to Bunker Brand and get yourself a new behoove shirt, a hoodie, or a sticker. Uh, it's the perfect gift for the NCO in your life who says behoove way too much. So it would behoove you to orientate yourself to Bunker Branding. Uh, you can also head over to Substack and toss me five bucks, get access to all the stuff I can't show you on YouTube. And thank you so much for watching. In a world where fashion meets firepower, where style becomes strategy, it's time to gear up for the ultimate mission with Bunker Brand. Introducing the Rock Out With Your Chalk Out t-shirt, a tribute to the fearless air of cavalry. Feel the adrenaline rush as you don the pride of the skies. For those of you who dare from the air, precision and power unite when you think outside the bomb. And don't miss our Live Laugh Launch t-shirts for Patriot and High Mars, because sometimes defending freedom means bringing the thunder. Finally, for the true defender of the seas, we present Department of the Boat People. Sail with honor and show your allegiance to the world's mightiest maritime force. With these shirts, hoodies, and stickers, along with the tow missile, landmines, and drone warfare. These aren't just shirts, they're statements. They're your way of saying I stand for strength, unity, and style. Get yours at Bunker Branding today.